All right, so if we are going to graph this polynomial, we first want to think about the basic shape that it's going to take. And when we look at this, we can see pretty clearly that this is going to be a fifth degree polynomial. And so we immediately know that the basic shape of that polynomial is going to look something like that. All right, so let's go ahead and create our graph. And once we know the basic shape, we can then begin to think about the roots. Where is it going to inter intersect the x-axis? And we can pretty clearly tell that it's going to pass through the x-axis or hit the x-axis at negative 3, at 0 because of the x cubed term, and then again at 6. And so using this basic shape, we can you know, ascertain that it's going to come up from the depths and hit the x-axis at negative 3. But there's some question, what does it do? Does it hit at negative 3 and bounce back? Let me give you an idea of what that would look like. Does it hit at negative 3 and bounce back? Or does it hit at negative 3 and pass through negative 3 and then come down and hit uh, the x-axis again at 0? And how can we test that? Well, we, we can make a test, and the test is, let's plug in an x value that is in between negative 3 and 0. And if it's positive, then we'll know that it must go through negative 3 and be positive. If it is negative, let me show you, if, if it is positive, it would have to go through negative 3 and then come back down. And if it's negative, it would have to bounce back because it would have to stay negative. So if we plug in, let's say, negative 1, if we plug in negative 1, what are we going to get? Well, if we plug in negative 1 for x, we're going to end up getting 2 times negative 7 times negative 1 cubed. And that's going to be a positive times a negative times a negative, which is, of course, going to be positive. And so this will continue through negative 3, and then it must hit the x-axis again at 0. And Again, I'm confronted with this issue. Does it hit at zero and does it pass through or will it bounce back off? Will it bounce back off? Well, again, I can plug in some value between zero and six and see is it positive or negative? Where should my function be? Let's say we choose positive one. Well, if I plug in positive one, I'm going to end up with four times negative five times one cubed which is going to be a positive times a negative times a positive. So it must be negative. So we're going to continue passing through, and then it's going to come up. And here, we don't actually have to do our test. Why is that? We know the basic shape of our function is a quintic function. So it must eventually, its end behavior must rise. And as we push out into greater x values, we must be increasing. So my only option is for it to pass through the x-axis at x equals 6 and continue on rising upward. And so there we have our function. Here we see a slightly more complicated polynomial, and I want to take this step by step. Let's first try and ascertain exactly what the shape of this polynomial is going to be. So if I were to factor this out, we can see that we'd end up with a fifth degree polynomial. What shape does a fifth degree polynomial take? Well, if I plug in a very large negative value, I'm going to get an even larger negative value. So it's going to dive down and then eventually rise back up as it passes through zero. And this seems fine, this is x to the fifth power, but we want to notice that we're not going to get simply x to the fifth power. We're actually going to get x to the fifth power times a negative, so we're going to end up with negative x to the fifth power. What will that look like? Well, if I plug in a big negative value, or any negative value for that matter, any negative value to the fifth power is going to be negative. So when I multiply that by a negative, I'm going to end up with a positive. So all negative values will be positive. Eventually I'll get to zero. And then once I hit the positive values, think about that. A positive value to the fifth power is going to be positive times a negative, and the negative will kick it down and make it negative.
So that negative x to the fifth power is going to have it's going to give it a basic shape just like that. So now we can go about creating our graph of the function with much more knowledge of what the function is going to look like. Let's identify our roots now. We know that one root is going to take place at negative 2. Another root is going to take place at positive 4. Those are the only two roots that we're going to have for this function. And using our basic shape, we can understand that it's going to start and from left to right, it's going to decrease. And we're going to start up here and we're going to decrease. Maybe that shouldn't be quite so steep. And we're going to hit negative 2. We're going to hit the x-axis at negative 2. And the question is, what happens? Will it bounce back up off the x-axis? Or will it dive down and pass through? And we can simply pick a number. We need to pick a number between negative 2 and 4. Some of you might be saying, why do I have such a big area? Well, the only two roots are negative 2 and 4. It cannot pass through the x-axis at any other point. And so if it's positive at some point in between negative 2 and 4, it must stay positive. If it's negative between negative 2 and 4, it must stay negative because it could not cross back over before it hits its next root. So let's take a, a value that's in between negative 2 and 4 that's easy. Let's use 0. So if I plug in 0, I'm going to end up with negative 2 times, oh, I'm sorry, squared, times negative 4 cubed. Well, a positive number squared is positive, so I'm going to have a negative times a positive is a positive, and a negative number cubed is negative, so I'm going to have a negative times a positive times a negative, and I'm going to end up with a positive value. So this must bounce back up off the x-axis. And then eventually, it's got to cross at 4. And here, once again, I do not have to do any tests. Why is that? The basic path of a polynomial uh, of the fifth degree tells us that it must eventually dive down. Why is that? Because this x to the fifth term, that's negative x to the fifth term, is going to overpower everything else. So let's say that when I foiled this out, I ended up with negative x to the fifth plus 10x to the fourth plus 2x to the third. Eventually, when I get really large x values, the x to the fifth term is going to be so much bigger than all these other terms that it won't matter. And we can essentially forget about what these do and realize that it's simply going to look like a fifth degree polynomial. And so that's the graph of this function. At this point, what we want to do is we want to take stock of what we've learned. What trends are we noticing in our graphs of polynomial functions? Remember, our goal is to answer the question, how can I take a look at a polynomial function and sketch a very accurate representation of the graph? In other words, if I sketch a rep representation of the graph, I immediately then know so much more about this function. I know, for example, here that it's decreasing for every value less than negative 2. And after negative 2, it must increase at some point. And then at some point, it must start decreasing back again. And past, negative, or past 4, it must decrease the entire way. And that's a lot of information that we know about that function now. So what are the trends that we're noticing that we'll have? Uh, I wrote down some, and I will uh, take some time to go over them, and we'll create a graph down here below so that I can show you some examples of what we mean. The first thing we notice is that even degree polynomials, so x squared, x to the fourth, x to the fifth, I'm sorry, x to the sixth, x to the eighth, uh, they have the same end behavior. What does that mean? Well, let's graph x to the fourth. Looks something like that. And end behavior says, it, well, what it is, is as I'm pushing out to the limits of the x-axis in both directions, what does the function do? Well, as I'm pushing out in the positive direction, the function is increasing. And as I push out in the negative direction, the function is increasing. That's the nature of an odd degree polynomial. And so it has the same end behavior, x to the fourth power. Okay. What about an odd degree polynomial? Well, let's take a look at x to the fifth power. It's going to start negative. Going to hook back through 
and eventually move its way back positive. Say this were x to the fifth. And for x to the fifth, right, it's very obvious that what is the end behavior? Well, the end behavior as we move to the left, it's getting negative, it's decreasing. As we move to the right, it is increasing. So it has different end behavior. They're opposite end behaviors. But we can get even more specific. So consider what's happening for an even degree polynomial with a positive leading coefficient. What I mean by that is the coefficient of x to the fourth is positive here. It's positive 1. And when it's positive, every value is going to be positive. Okay, so it's going to open upwards. With an odd degree polynomial, and our example here, x to the fifth, we again have a positive leading coefficient of 1. And we can see that what happens as, is as we move from left to right, the function is increasing, the values increase. What happens if I have a negative leading coefficient? Well, let's consider that for the even function. All right? What happens if instead of x to the fourth, I have negative x to the fourth? Well, what will happen there is all the values that were at first positive, now because of this negative out front, are going to be negative. So it's going to flip or reflect over the x-axis and look something like that. And so here we can say that it will open downwards. What about for an odd degree polynomial? Well, let's consider negative x to the fifth. Negative x to the fifth, I should have written it up here, negative x to the fifth is interesting in that when we plug in a negative value, we have a negative times a negative, which is going to be a very large positive number. So it's going to be positive and then drop down and become negative. And so here it is, negative x to the fifth power. And so what we can see is that we've essentially reflected over the y-axis here. So we can say that an odd degree polynomial uh, with a negative leading coefficient is going to decrease as I move from left to right. All right, there's one more thing that we want to talk about, and that's the roots. So I'm actually going to create another graph here. And we have roots with what's called an even multiplicity. And I want you to look back at the previous example. And in the previous example, we saw two different roots, right? We had, uh, if I can remember, we had negative x plus 2 squared times x minus 4 cubed. And when we graph this, negative 2 and 4, we had a function that looked like this. And we notice that when I'm at a root, there's only two options. It can either hit the x-axis and bounce back up, as it does here, or it can hit the x-axis and pass through. And notice where we got these roots from. We got negative 2 from the x plus 2 squared factor. This has what's called multiplicity of 2, because the number of times that this factor occurs is twice, because it's squared. And so when we have a even multiplicity, we will bounce back off the x-axis. And alternatively, if we have an odd multiplicity, it will descend, it will pass through or potentially ascend through the x-axis. Uh, in fact, you're going to take a look at why this works in the homework uh, question number one that you're looking at. Hope this helped. Have a good one.